I'm CJ Farley. I'm the author of the new book, Zero O'Clock. It's a book for young adults. It's about Geth, a teenager growing up in New Rochelle, New York, which was at one point the epicenter of the epidemic, now a pandemic. And she sort of channels some of the frustration and anxiety she feels from the early stages of the pandemic. And she gets involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. And I wrote the book because, you know, I got two teenage kids and I wanted to write a book that reflected their lives and that other teens would enjoy reading. I, I know you from somewhere, don't I? Yeah, you know, um, Christopher John Farley is my full name. Um, I was a music critic for Time Magazine, put Lauryn Hill on the cover, interviewed everyone from like Bruce Springsteen to, um, to Sade uh, to Kanye West um, and uh, Taylor Swift. I went on and became a senior editor at the Wall Street Journal where I interviewed people like Adele and Ed Sheeran and um, now I'm a tech executive. I'm an executive editor at Audible, which is part of Amazon. So uh, that's my career arc, and all along the way, I just enjoyed doing books, writing books, especially for young people, because you know, there are very few books out there um, uh, for young adults that are written for and by um, uh, black people. And I think it's important to get books like that out there to tell our story um, by us, uh, so we can see ourselves in the pages of books. I love it. Well, it seems like there's a renaissance of sorts all across the culture. Yeah, there is a renaissance, I think, in terms of black literature. Um, I think the important thing, though, is to talk about things that, um, that are uh, gripping our communities and that also ultimately have an uplifting message, a message of empathy, a message that we can use to better ourselves. Uh, that's one reason why in my, in my last book, um, uh, around Harvard Square. It was a story of a young black Harvard freshman, you know, uh, dealing with what it's like to be a, a first year student in an Ivy League university. Because I wanted to tell that story. That was a story that hasn't been told. We didn't always see ourselves in those places. And in my new book, um, uh, which is about a high school um, senior, you know, she's trying to get into Columbia University. And, you know, I'm working hard and feeling anxious about that and taking tests. And so we get to see that from a, a black perspective. And the funny thing is that um, after I wrote the book about this um, young girl trying to get into Columbia University, that's her dream school, my son ended up applying to Columbia University and getting in. So um, I'm not saying my book will help your kid get into Columbia University or, or any kind of elite institution, but you know, it couldn't hurt. It certainly helped in my case. It was sort of weird for me to imagine that happening and then seeing it happen in real life, almost like it did in the book. Well, so, well books are magic, though. Uh, books are magic, and I know that. You know, the thing is, um, oh, speaking of magic, we um, we're often denied magic in our own books. Oftentimes, our books are 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 just about you know urban settings, which is great, just about crime and violence, which is important to deal with, or about the civil rights era, which is important to explore. But there are other things going on in the black community. There are other things going on in the black imagination that we need to explore. Um, one of my early books was called Game World, which is a fantasy adventure. Um, a middle grade fantasy adventure about kids who sort of have to explore this mythological world um, that's based on Jamaican myth. And I think it's important to tell us those stories too because uh, we're not always placed in those fantasy environments, we're not always placed in science fiction stories, and so we as writers have to imagine ourselves there because I think it, 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 it allows our kids to dream bigger and to dream of things that aren't there, and that's really important to do. No, I definitely agree with that. I mean, so. What, who were your, some of your inspirations? I mean, what got you into writing young adult fiction? Well, you know, one of my inspirations is I remember growing up, I grew up in Brockport, New York, which is a, a town in upstate New York. It's near Rochester, a lot of cows, a lot of apple trees, a lot of open fields. And my parents taught at the State University of New York at Brockport. My father was the head of the economics department. My mother was chairman of the African American Studies Department. I remember one time she brought in Gwendolyn Brooks, the great black poet, to speak at Brockport, and she came by our house. And I couldn't believe this incredibly important poet, she was the first black person to win the Pulitzer Prize, was here in my house, and I ran upstairs and got the encyclopedia, and I looked her up, and um, this, that's how you can tell how old the story is, because it involves encyclopedias. And I remember she, she looked at it and she signed it for me, and that really gave me this inspiration, and, and it made me think, okay, the people who write these books, they're real, they're not just fictional creations like the books themselves, they're real people who do these things, and so, I can go on that path as well. So um, that's one of my inspirations, you know, seeing Gwendolyn Brooks, um, me, um, interviewing Alex Haley, the author of Roots and the co-author of the autobiography, uh, autobiography of Malcolm X. 
re meeting those great authors and talking to them really is something that helped set me on the path to trying to do it myself. Fantastic. So nuts and bolts. I mean, what's your creative process like? I mean, when, you, when you're putting a novel together, do you write straight through or do you outline? Um, what's, how long does it usually take? Well, my, my creative process, first off, it starts off with an idea. You want to write about stuff that no one else is writing about. Uh, I think it's always useless to sort of just write about things that have already been hits or that other people have already done. You want to break new ground. You want to address the issues that, uh, that you have fears and anxieties and thoughts about and not just trod ground that other people have done. You want to give voice to the voiceless. You do that for your, for, at the idea level, you're already heading on the right path. Um, for this book, um, I, I do usually outline my books first before, um, before I write them. Uh, but because I was writing this during the beginning of the pandemic, it was unclear where the pandemic would go. And so some of the book was, was altered as I was writing it. And so it was a really exciting place to be. One reason why I decided to write about, write about the pandemic is because um, it was something we were all going through. And it was something my kids were going through. I could see that the pandemic was stealing things away from them. I mean, I think for adults, the pandemic is part of our lives. But it's not the only part of our lives. It, you know, we've, we've, we've been through um, bad times. We'll probably see other bad times, hopefully not as bad as this. But it's just one part of our lives. For our kids whose lives are just beginning, this is like their whole high school careers, their whole middle school careers. They've lost track seasons, basketball seasons, um, first dates, proms, um, uh, first years of colleges. And so I thought this is a very important thing for me to try to capture, put in book form, so they feel seen, so their experiences are part of the record. I remember one point when I was starting to write this book, 60 Minutes came to New Rochelle to do a story about how New Rochelle was at the beginning of the pandemic before it sort of spread out around, around, the, around the country. I thought to myself, I don't want 60 Minutes to tell my community stories before I tell them. I've got to go out there, write a book, finish it up, and tell our story myself. And I think everyone should do that. When there's a story happening to you or your community or your world, tell your story. Don't let someone else tell it first. I love it. So where, where can people find the book and where can people find you? Yeah, you can find my book at Better Bookstores everywhere. If there's a local black bookstore, go check it out. You can also check, um, get my, all my books on Amazon, um, uh, Game World and, and Zero O'Clock and, um, and around Harvard Square. So go to, go to Amazon, look for C.J. Farley, and you'll find my books there. And I'm also on Twitter, at C.J. Farley, at C.J. Farley on Twitter. Wonderful. Thanks for your time, sir. Great.